When scraping data from websites with Power Query, either in Excel or Power BI, occasionally the website will return an error message. And unfortunately, it's often difficult to understand what the error means and how to fix them. So in this video, Phil is going to share a way you can create your own custom error messages that are more helpful to your users so they can resolve them more easily. If you're working with web servers, either because you're trying to scrape data or you're using a web-based API, then you'll be sending and receiving data via HTTP. HTTP is the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. It's just the name of the system used by websites and browsers to transfer data. You use it every time you visit a website, even if you didn't realize it. If your request for data results in an error, the web server or the API will generate an error which is returned to Power Query. The default behavior for Power Query is to then spit out a message like this. If you're not familiar with HTTP or this type of error, then this can be confusing. What exactly is the problem here? If you could handle this type of error in your own code and provide a little more information to the end user, perhaps that would help them troubleshoot the issue and even resolve the problem. What if your error message was this instead? This message gives the user some idea of things to check, like the spelling of the URL, and tells them a way to confirm the URL is correct by typing it into their browser. If we look at the URL the query is trying to access, I'll just open the advanced editor. You can see that it's trying to get data from www.microsoft.com forward slash Microsoft 356. Let's take the advice of the error message and copy this and put it into my web browser and see what we get. So in a new tab in the browser, I'm just going to paste in that URL, hit enter, and I get this error message saying, sorry, page you requested cannot be found. You may have already spotted that the URL is incorrect. It should end with Microsoft 365, not 356. By giving a more informative error message and some steps the user can take to troubleshoot, we can help them understand and maybe even fix problems that may occur. In order to manually handle these errors, you have to tell Power Query you're going to handle them. You do this by specifying the manual status handling value when you make the web.contents request. As you can see here, I'm telling Power Query that I will deal with 400 and 404 errors. But handling errors means that you need to write your own error messages too. To store these, I've created a static data table that stores the error codes and the messages I want to display should the associated error occur. This table is stored in a query called HTTP errors and looks like this. If I open the advanced editor, you can see that I'm using the hash table to construct a static data table. If I want to handle more errors, let's say I want to handle a 403, I can just add a line here, specify the error number, which is 403 obviously, and then a text message, which is what I want to communicate to the user. At this point, I should say that I'm obviously using Excel for this video, but the code works just the same in Power BI. The code for the main query is the same, the only difference being the way the static data table is created for the error messages. I'll just drag Power BI over into the screen so you can see what I mean. Click on Transform Data to open Power Query. And in the HTTP Errors table, if I click on the cog beside the source step, you can see that the data has been entered here with the Add Data button. Adding or removing rows here for errors is just as easy as it is in Excel Power Query. I've got a separate video on static data tables, so please refer to that to see how to create them. I'll include a link below to that video. Back in Excel again, I'm just going to click on Done to close this down. So you can see that the error code column is a list of the error codes that I'm handling. The error message column contains the text that will be displayed for the associated error code. To instruct the web.contents query to use the error codes and messages in this table, I'll replace this explicit list of error numbers with a reference to the error code column in the HTTP errors table, like this. Now that my code is manually handling certain errors, I need to check if an error has actually occurred. And you can do this using the value.metadata function. Let's close this query and see what this function gives us. In this metadata step, you can see the data returned by value.metadata. I'm really only interested in the response status. And in this response code step, I'm grabbing that status from the metadata. And you can see, obviously, that the web server has responded with a 404 error. 
Now that we know the response code from the web server, we need to check if it is an error we want to handle. Back in the advanced editor again, to do this, you can use the list.contains function to check if the response code is in the error codes column of the HTTP errors table. If it is, then the code needs to display the associated error message. And to access that error message, first use list.positionOf to get the row number for the error code. Now remember that because table columns are rows, you can use list functions on them. Lists are indexed from zero, so error code 404 is on row three. So what the code is doing here is returning three, and this gets the text in row three of the error message column. This last part of the statement here, the else, is only carried out if the web server's response is not an error, and it just returns the response as it is. If an error occurs that isn't listed in my HTTP errors table, then Power Query will deal with that in the default way. If no error occurs, then the response step contains the web server's response, which will be the web page or API data you ask for, and further transformations can be carried out on it. So that's how you invoke manual status handling for errors in Power Query. I hope that learning how to do this makes your code more resilient and allows you to communicate more effectively with your end users. Well, I hope you found these techniques useful. You can download the files for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful. Thanks for watching.